Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we are discussing a further development in the Purito sunscreen controversy. For those of you that are new to the channel, or maybe haven't watched the previous videos I've done on the topic, I will leave a link to them up there, so check them out. But there was a little bit of an issue recently, maybe two or three weeks ago, where some independent testing was done on the Purito Centella Green Level Unscented Sunscreen, which was advertised as an SPF 50, but in those testings actually came out as an SPF of 19. That left loads of people shook because we loved, loved Loved, loved that um, sunscreen. It was so light. It gave a gorgeous level, a gorgeous feel to the skin. It was one of my holy grails for sure. But then it left a lot of people shook and wondering whether actually they can place faith in other sunscreens, either Korean ones or just global sunscreen industry. Are we actually getting the protection that we think we're getting when we're applying a sunscreen? So we're going to delve a little bit more into that today because we've had another round of testing done on that specific Purito sunscreen and we have some other testing, third party independent verification coming up on some other cult favourite Korean sunscreens that I want to share with you so hopefully we can start to reassess our opinions of them and get back some trust in Korean sunscreens and just the sunscreens that we use in general. I'm going to say first off, I'm so sorry for my voice. I've come down with like a throat thing, which is why I've got huge breakout on my temples. The second I feel a little bit run down, I get a breakout on the forehead. My voice sounds like I should be like moonlighting on one of those evening chat lines. But you know, it's not a great look, but I'm plowing through. So let's talk about the recent developments. Since we have the Inky Decoder testing, we actually have a, had another third party independent test done on the Purito Centella unscented green level sun block. This was done by the Korea Institute for Dermatological Sciences, which is an independent reviewing organization. They took 10 people and they tested the effectiveness of the sunscreen on them when it was applied to the human skin. There's loads of different ways you can test sunscreens. This test complied with European testing standards as well as Korean testing standards. So it's a robust and really well put together test. However, there are different ways you can test the SPF you're getting out of a product. I don't need to go into detail about that because actually Lab Muffin Beauty Science has done a fantastic video. I would honestly tell everybody to check out because that, um, I'll leave a link to it up there because that will help you understand a little bit about how you can get different test results depending on different tests you do and how some of the different testing standards um, occur across the globe. So check that video out because it really gives a great perspective on sunscreen testing. But this third party independently verified um, testing on the Purito Centella unscented sunscreen showed instead of it having an SPF of 19, which the Inky Decoder testing had, actually had an SPF of around 20. Eight. That's a significant difference. It led a lot of people to wonder wh which is right, and actually it is perfectly possible for both of these tests to be right. You check out the Lab Muffin video more if you want to understand how some of the different testings work, because it was a different testing regime for each of these two tests. They came out with different results, but e e both are equally as valid in my opinion, but I'd recommend you check out that video. So it led us to reevaluate really what we think of this product. So, and I'm gonna share my thoughts and feelings on the product in light of the new testing, and how maybe these things could have occurred. First of all, it's worth noting that all testing has a margin of error. So they use the, the 19, um, SPF 19 from the Inky Decoder test was the median um, SPF given across all of their testing subjects. The same goes for the 28 SPF, which was delivered from the Korean Dermatological Sciences Institute. Both of these do have margins of error. So they're the median values, but in the case of the Korean um, Dermatological Institute, that actually had a margin of error of around three and a half. So. You could be talking about an SPF of 25. You could be talking about an SPF of 31. Really interesting. I'll leave a link to that study um, below. So check that out if you do want to read a little bit more about it. Because interestingly, they applied it onto 10 subjects and monitored the effectiveness of the product and the SPF that it gave to that individual. It shows the individual test results and each individual had a different SPF, which then then averaged out to give the overall value. That's super interesting because it does show that the SPFs, particularly chemical SPFs, work totally different depending on the individual. What results you'll get from one person's skin and how it interacts with one person's skin is different to how you'll get with somebody else's. Now it shouldn't be wildly different from 19 through to 50, you know, it shouldn't be that different. But you can get different results depending on the person and how the product interacts with your skin. So that, that was just a really interesting thing to check out in that particular study. 
I have a lot of people coming to be worried that because they've been using the um, unscented Centella sunscreen for so long that they might have done damage to their skin. I always reaffirm the idea that the difference between an SPF of 19 and an SPF of 30 isn't hugely different. The difference between an SPF of 30 and an SPF of 50 isn't wildly different in terms of the amount of UV rays that they'll stop reaching the skin's surface and doing damage. So it is worth noting that whilst it seems like a huge difference between 19 and 50, you will still have been getting some um, protection from the product whilst you applied it. Similarly, if it turns out, if you believe that it came, comes out as an SPF of 28, then you're actually getting a reasonable level of sun protection. Now, it all boils down for me of a brand should do their own testing and make sure that the claims that they're putting on their product can be independently verified and are truthful. That's kind of where it breaks down in terms of the trust between myself as a consumer and Purito. Though I leave everybody to do their own research and form their own opinions on that. Interestingly, and this is what I really want to share in this video, the um, Institute of Dermatological Sciences are now testing a whole range of different um, Korean sunscreens using the same method that they've tested the Centella unscented Purito sunscreen. This is great because a lot of us have stopped using Korean sunscreens because we were worried the same issues might be prevalent across the industry. I don't think we should tar all Korea with the same brush, so it would be really good to see, to get some um, confirmation of what the SPF site and some of our favourite Holy Grail Korean sunscreens. Some of the ones that they're testing on are the Claire's Water at UV Essence, which I know you guys literally adore. So if that comes back as a really good SPF, I think everybody will be so, so happy. My personal favourite, the Make Prep UV Defense Me Fluid, I love that product and I really hope that that comes back as a really strong and robust SPF because I'd love to continue using that product. And I'm also going to be testing um, the Crave Beach Sun um, Gel, which I know so many of you love. There's about 30 that they're going to be testing. I'll leave a link to them all below so you can check that out. And the results are going to be released on Christmas Day. <laughs> I don't know why the December the 25th. Um, I don't know what the process of celebrating Christmas is like over in Korea. That's my na naivety. So maybe it's just an every other day over in Korea. But that could be an early Christmas present for all you guys. If you have a real favourite hardcore love of a Korean sunscreen that's on that list to be tested, you can get some reassurance to continue using it, knowing you're getting that great SPF coverage. I wanted to jump on, do a super quick video to share this with you, but leave your thoughts and feelings below. So are you continuing to use the Purito? My advice has always been to continue to use it on days where you don't need that super robust SPF protection. There's no point wasting product. I hate consumer waste. And so why not reach for it on the days where the UV light radiation is lower here in the UK? It's winter. We barely get any sun. And so it's a great day moisturizer in the winter here in the UK. Obviously, you're not going to want to use it in the harsh Australian sun of summer. So, you know, be a bit cautious, but there's no need to throw it away. At the very least, you can use it as an effective moisturizer. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye.